we're taking an early look at the Hohem MT2 gimbal. Now this is the kit, and what's really exciting about this is that I've had the M6 version, which is the smartphone version, for a bit. I've actually been going through and making adapters so I can put other DSLRs or other cameras on here, even though that's not technically supported. The main things that I really like about these systems is this right here. It's a little AI camera that lets you go through and do a lot of smart things that you normally wouldn't get on such a cheaper gimbal. Comparison, and what I mean by cheaper gimbal, this is still rather expensive. This is the DJI RS3 Pro. This has fully decked out, kitted out, and this is way too much money. And the point is, this has all the tracking features. This also has the ability to manually focus manually track people, enable tracking. Comparison wise, yes, this is for a much nicer camera rig. You're getting a lot of the same features and especially for someone that's making YouTube videos, the equivalence on this is gonna be pretty hard to tell. So let's get into it. So first thing you'll notice is you'll get something that's a lot more similar to what DJI sends with their kits compared to what we saw with the M6 gimbal, which was just this little baggie here. All that you get with it is just the cable and some instructions. So first thing you agree with is the instructions, the bunch of cables, additional adapters for GoPros, the same bottle handle tripod, mounting plate, and it also looks like a mounting plate for a phone, which is great because then we can do AB comparison between the two devices. Also, of course, you have the gimbal, very nice and metal. This is all plastic. You also have these really nice um, locking mechanisms. You also get the same tracking camera. So let's start decking this out. So this right here is my Sony RX100 Mark 7. So it's something that I like to put on this tripod here. So let's build this out. Another thing that you'll notice too is right here you have a key so you can manually adjust things as well. So you don't actually need to carry around a screwdriver. When it comes to cables, let's see what we get. You have a USB-C to micro USB. You have a USB-C to USB-C. You have a charging cable. USB-C to also microphone audio jack. I'm gonna balance this out with my Ceramonic Blink Me B2. Um, one of my favorite little microphones that I've gotten to take a look at recently as well. Now it does look like it's got a little bit of an off tilt to it, so it might need to be calibrated. But other than that, it looks like it's doing pretty solid with the camera movements. Also very smooth, very flexible, and it looks like I don't have too much issue about to worry about it hitting. Yeah, we'll get some test footage over in a sec. I guess we'll compare the two. Now, I want to start off by saying I love this gimbal a whole lot, um, just like I love the M6, but there is one major glaring problem that I think is going to be a deal breaker for a lot of people. This gimbal struggles when you are moving, accelerating, or changing directions. Um, I think probably the main reason from that is that this is based on a gyroscope, and therefore when you accelerate, the gimbal will start tilting downwards, when you start to decelerate, the gimbal will start tilting upwards. And it results in, especially when you're using like a telephoto lens or something with a long distance or a lens with maybe a high millimeter number. Um, this goes all the way up to 200 millimeter equivalent. Um, you really start noticing that when you're trying to go for those telephoto shots. And I didn't have too much of an issue with it if I was staying kind of somewhat at the same speed. However, the moment that you start going through and like moving around or using this from like a car, for example, uh, it gets very difficult. You'll notice that like the, the camera will start tilting when you go around corners. And I was pleasantly surprised by that. It's very difficult to pull something off, especially if you're moving a lot and it's not something that you can easily compensate for with the stick. It has to, it's really difficult to get a solid shot. Now the mounting options that this comes with is pretty solid. They've included a GoPro mount and a phone mount, which honestly, again, I'm amazed that they actually bought to do this. They could have easily thrown an adapter on the M6 to include GoPros but they didn't, and actually I think the M6 would have been a better choice to do that for. A bunch of adapters would have been awesome. And if you're really interested in the price range that this comes at without all these extra features, I'll include and I'll make a couple adapters as well that you can find in the description. And I'm gonna say a very controversial opinion. Compared to the DJI RS3, I prefer this tracking, period. And that, that that's, that's comparing a little $2,000 system to something that's $300. Like the, the stuff that comes out of this, the, the tracking is flat out better. Um, and I don't have anything else. I didn't get a chance to test much of the vertical shooting. However, again, this is very similar to the M6 in that both these gimbals basically support vertical shooting. And the fact that all you have to do in order to get vertical shooting is basically just uh, disconnect everything. Really just slide this out. And you literally can get vertical shooting like that. Again, this is not a complicated or complex process. Arguably on the M6, it's even better. 
all you gotta do is you just slide this out and just pop that out and then you can shoot, shoot vertically. I can set that up like that. One of my biggest frustrations though, was I had a lot of issues with this cable kind of connecting to this camera. Um, a, because the Sony RX100 uh, is actually one of the main cameras that they you know tout support with. Um, but all of the connectors are on the side that of the gimbal that has like the arm. So you end up with trying to scoot the camera over enough that then you can put the cables in. And then of course that off centers the camera. I just found it also very frustrating that the cables doesn't come with, I wanna say a upward facing or a downward facing uh, right hand connector. Also, my cable just was very spotty at times. Uh, I know this is a multi-cable, but like half the time it didn't even like work with the zoom and I don't know why. However, luckily enough, there is an option for Bluetooth. So you can basically hook up the gimbal as a Bluetooth device to your camera. And that was a big saver. Um, however, you still don't get the, you know, power out if you're trying to, you know, make sure this is all the way over with all your connectors over here. Other than that, it works fine. Um, I am gonna show you guys how to connect your camera to the gimbal because it's in a weird spot in the user interface. If you end up buying this, this is gonna save you. So in order to get your Bluetooth functionality or your Bluetooth connection to your camera, you're gonna wanna turn on the device. You wanna hold down the M key. And then you're gonna to wanna to press the B key. And then you wanna click pairing and then in your device also set up Bluetooth pairing then it will connect automatically. It will give me it's a separate icon, believe it or not. It will have a camera Bluetooth connection as well as a standard Bluetooth connection. And then you'll get all the functionality you normally would get out of that. Also, another feature that I wanna talk about that I was actually really appreciative of is that when you turn off this gimbal, um, if your stuff is off balance, it's gonna swing. But basically, you notice how this is like off center, right? And actually, currently it's bottom heavy. So if I push this all the way forward, uh, the bottom of the camera is very bottom heavy. If you were to let go of it right now and we turn this gimbal off, it's gonna slowly uh, bring it back down to kind of static or kind of where it would have started. Because so as you see, had you bring it up, it would have swung like that. So as you notice when you turn it off, it actually slowly tilts back down. Now the user interface is, I wanna say, almost identical, pretty much identical to the M6. If you watch any videos on the M6, this was a pretty standard, uh, you know, switch, turning on buttons, all the buttons, everything is pretty much the same. The little, the handle is is identical. Um, the user interface on it is identical. In order to change and adjust the AI vision sensor is identical. Um, you literally have the focus ring, all that. Um, the one thing is I didn't get compatibility with the focus ring. I wasn't able to actually manually focus on this camera. Um, I did enable manual focusing. I did all that. I tried to mess with it. Again, this little AI tracking camera has a fill light on it as well which means that you can actually get some light out of this too. Again, this is like the most, I wanna say the most coolest little bit of technology that's come out of anything in gimbal wise recently. And I know that the DJI RS3 Pro has of course its LiDAR module, which has a lot of functionality for higher end filmmakers, but for the average, I wanna say influencer slash pro YouTuber, whatever you wanna call it, this is very, very adequate. Um, and honestly, I think you know, not much need to go above this unless you're getting into something where you're doing professional video. I'm about halfway through the battery on this and I've been using this pretty much every single day for about maybe 30 minutes, which I don't know what that equates to, but for a whole week of doing that, we'll just say roughly about three and a half hours. And to be honest with you, uh, that means roughly about seven hours. And this was not balanced all the time because I personally wanted to make sure that this was, you know, slightly off so I could fit the cables in there. So this wasn't, and also you have to slide the cable, this whole thing forward and backwards in order to get the cables to fit. So then again, this was not really always balanced. So for A, having seven and a half hours of battery with a not fully balanced system, um, again, because I wish they had a better connector system, you know, that's, that's really solid. And I think that, you know, compared to, you know, for something that you're gonna get that's gonna be take and go, that's relatively solid, no complaints there. In terms of attaching things to this, um, you have one standard screw hole like you do on the M6, but also you have one up here, a one fourth inch screw hole on the top there. And to be honest with you, this one is a little bit of an odd placement because if you want to include like a lavalier mic or something on there, uh, that's gonna catch when you start using the gimbal forward and backwards. So it then of course becomes an issue of, well, you know, you can't really mount things in there without risking it catching the gimbal. 
So everything has to be mounted on the camera. Now, again, this is enough robust mounting mechanisms here that you can actually fully balance whatever you throw on here. But again, it would have been nice to include that as well. Also notice on the M6 that that is now right here. It's down here as well as having one right there. The fill light is not bright enough that it will basically light up a room, but it can add a slight tint and kind of offset any lighting situations that you have um, that may kind of be offset. So say you have like a, you know, a brighter sunlit room, you can kind of put some blue in there. Um, it, it makes it you know very cool. And then you can also control that fill light directly through the gimbal as well. So you can turn the knob and manually control the color of the fill light and adjust that kind of on the fly. Again, this user interface is like probably pretty solid and I actually personally prefer this above the one that DJI has. When it comes to weight, it's gonna be no surprise that the MT2 is gonna be more heavy. However, I think that if you're just someone that's using your phone slash a GoPro, uh, or maybe even you know a lighter end camera, this is something that's light enough um, that I think is worth taking with you. Again, I would only buy the MT2 if you're planning on maybe seeing yourself going upgrading in the future or getting something better. Cause I think this is a $200 gimbal versus a $330 gimbal. And while you do get all the, basically this is, has everything the M6 has plus a whole lot more. Now, lastly, I wanna talk about the locking situation. Well, DJI is for the, at least for the RS3 Pro, has all these fancy locks that lock automatically. Um, whereas this, you have to manually kind of click all these locks off and then you can kind of start adjusting and balancing the camera. I think that honestly for this price range, this is as good as you're gonna get. All these other gimbals basically had relatively this, anything at this price range is gonna have the exact same problem. Um, again, the M5 doesn't actually have that. So you have a, you know, no locking mechanism except on the hilt here. And that's the only one that locks. So again, this can basically cause a lot of problems flopping around here like this. And I think it would have been very easy for them just to maybe include another set of locking mechanisms because then again, this is just going to flop around like such. So the MT2 is much more better in that regard that once you have a heavy camera on there, uh, it's not going to flop around, which is kind of expected to be honest. You don't, you know, a phone kind of can get a little bit beat up, um, but if you got an expensive camera on there, you don't want to worry about that kind of as you're basically walking around. So in conclusion, I actually am like personally in love with this gimbal. You know, there are some problems with it. Uh, and obviously being someone that has a nicer rig, I end up using this a lot more. Um, just if I'm using this more of like an influencer setup, as in like making videos with it that I'm just going to post on YouTube or something. If I'm using something more professional or want to, you know, get something that's a little bit higher quality, then of course I'll go for the RS3 Pro. But this is something that is light enough, very compact, and if I'm doing anything in the cars, you know, in a car or a boat or anything that's moving, it is sadly very difficult to use. And I think that, you know, as much as I love this, I really would hope that they put some patch that would include, you know, checking that and fixing that. Um, and then I'd use this a whole lot more in that situation as well. Um, but honestly, just walking around and just using this kind of for your standard shots with run and gun, um, this is, as I think, personally my top pick. And I love these little gimbals from Hohem a whole lot. And I definitely think that if you're doing something with a phone or a GoPro, the M6 is probably all you need to go for. If you want to do something that's a lot higher end, then of course you can go through and get the MT2. Check out the description below if you choose to go through and get the M6. I'll have a bunch of links. If you want an adapter for these uh, cameras to go on the M6, I'll throw my adapters out there as well. I'll 3D print you guys some adapters. Um, but if not, just buy the MT2. Uh, also a very solid setup as well. And obviously I'm not gonna be able to 3D print anything metal, uh, but this is, again, really solid, really personally enjoy it. And um, I think my personal top pick for a gimbal right now.